Today is the 15th of November. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name, as always, is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. And if you're joining us for the first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of prayer, scripture, and music. So without any more preamble, let's start today's leg of Walking the Way. And we begin today's episode with a prayer. Almighty God, you are author of life. We are in awe of your creation. The vast oceans reflect your majesty. The ever-changing skies renew our lands, and the deep valleys carry your peace and shelter. You are saviour of the world. We're amazed at your grace. The nations find peace in your forgiveness, and the sufferers hope in your healing hands. The burden find rest in your promise of heaven. You are unconditional love. We are privileged to be filled by your presence. The youth are filled with your vision, and the old are filled with your wisdom. The oppressed are unchained by your freedom. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, we worship you. And we're going to have our first piece of music for today, and after that, we'll get into our Bible readings. Yes. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, as we open our ears, we also open our hearts, that these words of truth may fall upon the very fabric of our lives. May these ancient scriptures come alive within us, to inspire, to heal, to cleanse and to teach, to restore and to guide our hearts and minds. Lord, come weave your words of life in us. Amen. And our Bible readings this week are taken from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. We're carrying on with 2 Chronicles 24, verses 20 through 27. The Spirit of God took control of Zechariah, son of Jehoiada the priest. He stood above the people and said to them, This is what God says. Why are you transgressing the Lord's commands and you do not prosper? Because you have abandoned the Lord, he has abandoned you. But they conspired against him and stoned him at the king's command in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. King Joash didn't remember the kindness that Zechariah's father Jehoiada had extended to him, but killed his son. While he was dying, he said, May the Lord see and demand an account. At the end of the year, an Aramean army went to war against Joash. They entered Judah and Jerusalem 
and destroyed all the leaders of the people among them and sent all the plunder to the king of Damascus. Although the Aramean army came with only a few men, the Lord handed over a vast army to them because the people of Judah had abandoned Yahweh, the god of their ancestors. So they executed judgment on Joash. When the Arameans saw that Joash had many wounds, they left him. His servants conspired against him and killed him on his bed, because he had shed the, the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest. So he died, and they buried him in the city of David, but they did not bury him in the tomb of the kings. Those who had conspired against him were Zabad, son of Ammonite woman Shemiath, and Behozabad, son of Moabite woman Shimrith. Concerning his sons, the many oracles about him, and the restoration of the Lord's temple, they are recorded in the writing of the book of Kings. His son Amaziah became king in his place. Revelations 21, verses 19 through 21. Then one of the seven angels, who had held the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues, came and spoke with me. Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. He then carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Arrayed with God's glory, her radiance was like a precious stone, like a jasper stone, bright as crystal. The city had a massive high wall, with twelve gates. Twelve angels were at the gates. The name of the twelve tribes of Israel's sons were inscribed on the gates. There were three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. The city wall had twelve foundations, and the twelve names of the Lamb's twelve apostles were on the foundations. The one who spoke with me had a gold measuring rod to measure the city, its gates, and the walls. The city is laid out in its square. Its length and width are the same. He measured the city with the rod at 12,000 stadia. Its length, width, and height are equal. Then he measured the, its wall. 144 cubits according to human measurements which the angel used. The building material of its wall was jasper, and the city was pure gold like clear glass. The foundations of the city wall were adorned with every kind of precious stone, the first foundation jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each individual gate was made of a single pearl. The broad street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. Matthew 17, verses 22 through 27. As they were meeting in Galilee, Jesus told them, The Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised up. And they were deeply distressed. When they came to Capernaum, those who collected the double drachma tax approached Peter and said, doesn't your teacher pay the double drachma tax? Yes, he said. Then he went into the house. And Jesus spoke to him first. What do you think, Simon? Who do earthly kings collect tariff or taxes from? From their sons or from strangers? From strangers, he said. Then the sons are free, Jesus told him. But so we won't offend them. Go to the sea, cast in a fish hook, and take the first fish that you catch. When you open its mouth you'll find a coin. Take it and give it to them for me and for you. We're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And after the music, we'll say our prayers for the day and the time of the year. Thank you. 
Let's pray, shall we? Lord, on this day I remember that you go before me. So I pause to meditate on your promises. Thank you, Lord, that you go with me. You lay a pathway. You wash over me like a shepherd. So I give you my fears, worries and anxieties, and I lay all the tension and stress at the foot of the cross. Thank you that you rose from the dead and that you bring life, freedom, hope and the promise of heaven. Praise you that I am safe in your presence. Amen. And our prayer for the time of the year. Dear Lord, change is hard, but we know that you are our helper. You are holding our hand as the challenges of life come our way, so we go through the motions of sad endings and scary beginnings. Help us to know that you are here with us. Help us to trust your plan, for we know that you have plans for us to prosper and not to harm us. As we grow and prosper along your path, remind us to be thankful for your love and guidance through our most challenging times. You are the source of life, happiness and love. Thank you for being our saviour our leader, and our protector. In Christ's name I pray for strength and guidance through changing times. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us, now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And before we finish our episode for today, I just want to say thank you to the staff at the Queen's Foundation in Birmingham, for putting us up for a week as we've looked at mission and ministry and gospel in context. So thank you to Jonathan and Kerry and Gary and Dan and Jason and everybody at Queen's for putting us up. You've been listening to Walking the Way, a podcast based on the book This Day, A Wesleyan Way of Prayer, by the Reverend Dr. Lawrence Holstuki and published by Abingdon Press. All the details for the show can be found in the show notes, including the credits for the prayers. And if you would like to partner with Walking the Way, uh, please visit www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. We'd really appreciate all the help you can give us as we look to upgrade some of the equipment that we're using. And for more information, please head to www.rayborrett.co.uk. And don't forget you can listen to Walking the Way on TuneIn and YouTube. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My name is Ray. And as always, I'll be here tomorrow, waiting, as we continue walking the way.